Alright, what's going on y'all? Welcome to the second vlog. Vlog? Is it a vlog? I don't know. The second video. Um, I didn't plan to start with daily content right from the jump. I planned to ease myself into it, but it was actually so easy to make that video yesterday and to edit it that here I am the next day making another video and I foresee it being fairly easy um, to make daily content if I'm doing this video style now today is back day and I almost skipped today to be quite honest uh, one of my friends he wants to play pickleball him and his wife want to play pickleball with me and my girlfriend and we had planned to do it around lunchtime but our schedules didn't match up and then he uh, he said why don't we do it around five and that was kind of that was gonna ruin the workout because the gym today closes at seven so and the gym Reds is where the pickleball courts are so we were gonna be there but I wasn't gonna be working out I was gonna be playing pickleball um, and this gym is you know as I've said in the last video it's literally a mile away so I'm gonna take a lap around the block so we can have a sufficient little car talk session here but uh, yeah I was gonna go play pickleball at 5 and there was no way I could have played pickleball and worked out before 7 before the gym closed so I just kind of decided all right look today's gonna be an off day um, and I was kind of dragging ass today I was pretty tired I'm still kind of tired but I took some pre-workout and it's starting to kick in I always take my pre-workout let's say 20 to 30 minutes before I train because that's how long it takes to really like get into my system and start peaking and I want it to be peaking when I start my workout obviously it lasts a good while pre-workout energy lasts for like a good four hours so you don't gotta slam it right before you go into the gym you know you can take it a, a good ways before and make sure it's really doing its thing before you even start because I think the guys that take it like right before especially the dry scoopers I've never dry scooped pre in my life but I think those guys are really missing out um, and typically like if it's a push day and I start with like heavy bench press if I took my pre-workout right before it wouldn't even be kicking in until I was like halfway through my bench session. And I really, you know, for that particular movement, I want it to be peaking. So definitely take it, you know, a good, a good ways out from your workout so you make sure it's doing its thing. But that's a conversation for another day. So today we're doing back. I kind of put myself in the same predicament as yesterday where, um, I'm gonna keep checking this screen because I wanna uh, wanna make sure. My camera's, what I didn't anticipate, the camera mount's in the perfect spot, but once I put the DJI uh, receiver on top of it, the cord is hitting this handlebar right here. So I'm gonna have to move the mount over because it's turning the camera and I'm having to like lean forward a little bit so that I'm in the shot. Um, but this is all growing pains, of course, from just starting, but as I was saying, it is back day. And just like, you know, arms where I alternate between biceps and triceps, legs where I alternate between quads and hamstrings, with back, I alternate between a pull down, like a lat movement, and a row, like a mid upper back movement. I don't do anything for lower back. On rows, like cable rows, um, you know, I do strict form. And towards the end, if you've ever seen Arnold work out, you know, he kind of leans forward and he does more of like a cheat rep, but that's working my lower back. That's about the most lower back I do. I did order this, um, this badass, like, I don't even know what it is. It's like a hyper extension Nordic curl hybrid machine from Freak Athlete that I'll have at the home gym. And once that comes in, I'll be doing a lot more lower back oblique and core work um but as for right now i don't really do any core work any lower back work it's all like lats upper mid back and rear delts 
So today is, is back in rear delts. I'm going to finish off with rear delts. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited that I'm getting to work out because I was pretty bummed. After filming yesterday's video and it being so easy and fun, I was like really excited to do it again today. And um, I definitely thought that the pickleball was going to inhibit me from working out today. And I'm really ready to train. My legs, y'all, if you watched yesterday's video, I was like rushing through the workout. I didn't even get to do as much volume as I wanted. And uh, I got home and I was like, man, that workout wasn't great. But, you know, at least I got something in. And I sat on the couch for about an hour and I went to stand up. And I couldn't stand up. That's how sore my legs were. So, like immediately after the workout. So I guess I, I worked out pretty hard, you know. And like I said, I skip legs all the time, so if I stay consistent, I'm hitting them twice every eight days, I should see some pretty good results. Definitely think they are, there are gains left on the table for me, even though I'm, I'm 34 turning 35 and I've worked out a lot of my life, I've been pretty inconsistent. I've never really dialed it in. Um, this is always just something I do, you know, and I'm, it's on and off for me. It's a, an on and off relationship, training. But um, I've had a net positive, you know, even though I've taken a lot of time off overall, I'm, I'm a fairly muscular guy just from the work I have put in over the years. So I'm no Sulik. I'm no Sulik. I'm probably like, probably have like 40 pounds less muscle than him. But um, I hold my own, you know, I hold my own. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm scatterbrained. At some point, we'll, we'll get better with the car talks, but the back day... I alternate between the lat movements and the row movements. So typically, I'll do, you know, pull downs and then cable rows and then some other type of pull down and a maybe a row machine. And then I might do some pullovers if I have time. And I'll finish off with some rear delts, either on the, uh, like a reverse fly on the pec deck or... Um, I'll find some cables and throw some cables back. I don't really like dumbbell rear flies. They don't they don't offer the best resistance, you know. Um, so yeah, that's what the workout's gonna look like. Pretty simple. I kind of put myself in the same situation as yesterday though, where I should be starting the workout right now, and um, it's not a, it's not as much my fault today because I thought I wasn't gonna work out, so I wasn't really prepared to do this. So it's kind of a last minute workout. But yeah, I should be starting the workout right now. It's 527. The gym closes at 7. Um, man, I keep having to move this shit. But it is what it is. You know, yesterday I did stay 15 minutes past closing time. They did end up, you know, I, w I did end up being the last person there. And they did, you know, tell me it's time to go. You got to go. So I became the asshole I didn't want to be, you know. But it is what it is. I cut my workout short too, so, I mean, I felt like I compromised, you know. Like, I stayed a little late, but I didn't stay as late as I wanted to, right? And, like, once you, when I'm at the gym, you know, I can do walking lunges. Obviously, my house is a mile away from the gym. I could have, what does this look like? Super overexposed, probably. Yeah, obviously, my house is uh, a mile away from the gym. I could have done the walking lunges when I got home but once you once you're out of that zone it's like there's no going back you know so once I was heading home I wasn't going to be doing walking lunges when I got home I was ready to shower and chill so we'll probably do um two lat focus movements two row focus movements um for sure and a rear delt and the pullovers if we have time but Pullovers are never really my favorite exercise to begin with. I just kind of do them because it does it does give a nice squeeze, but um, I just kind of throw them in there for added volume. It's never really been my favorite thing. Maybe I should find something else, but it's just something that I do. Typically, we're going to be doing like six to eight reps per set. You know, we're going to try to go super heavy. Um, if we do end up doing what I'm saying two and two I'll do four working sets per each one so that'll be eight working sets of lats 
eight working sets of upper mid back I won't do anything specific for traps um, I don't know my traps it's so weird like I can I can flex my traps and they look like big huge mountains but my bone structure my shoulders aren't very wide and from the front if I stand up straight it looks like I don't have traps but my traps are actually pretty big they're just all on my back I don't have like those front showing traps so I used to hit traps like crazy thinking that at some point I would have these traps that show from the front like Ronnie Coleman and my traps kept getting bigger but I didn't feel like it because they're not very visible from the front so at some point they were like really overpowering to my delts so I just stopped working out traps I just had to accept the fact that I won't have those front showing traps and I've seen a lot of people say that they think that's really unesthetic when the traps show from the front I always thought it looked really cool like I always thought it looked kind of alien um, obviously Ronnie Coleman looked like an alien you know but ever since I was little my best friend like we were like eight years old and he had traps that showed from the front and I just always thought that was the coolest thing, but it's not in the cards for me genetically. So it is what it is. So I don't hit traps right now. Honestly, the upper back, the row movements, those hit my traps to some degree. I get a little bit of trap activation when I'm doing like lateral raises as well. Um, I try to limit it, but ultimately I do get a little bit. But like I said, when I do the cheater reps on the rows um, towards the end of the set, I'm leaning forward and pulling back and that's giving me the low back but then also when I get to the end of the movement I'm like leaning back so that's giving me trap as well so I think that's plenty of trap for me you know uh, I don't know there's not too much to say this is the second video obviously I'm still warming up and I kind of feel like when I had my drive home from work yesterday I knew I was gonna be in the car for like a good 20 minutes so it just felt organic. Just now, like making loops around the block, I felt like I was just trying to find things to say because I was driving around in circles. I wasn't driving with a mission, you know what I mean? But hopefully, you know, you're like, oh, I actually have some calluses. My hands are like super soft, like all the time. They're like over, they're over, um, they're too moist all the time. I have some kind of disorder, I think. So I got to chalk up my hands because I typically never get calluses like I can rip my skin open and I feel like the next day it heals because my hands are just so moist um, but I actually have some calluses right now which is kind of cool so I always had baby hands you know people would probably assume I've never done any manual labor you know but it's just a it's just a condition or something <laughs> and it sucks I always have to chalk up my hands or uh, recently I got those those little wrist straps for back day and that's actually added quite a bit of weight quite a bit of strength to the to the movements I can do. I just spit everywhere when I said that. Um, the workout might be shorter today. Legs is a little more uh, comprehensive, I guess, you know. Back is pretty, back is probably the second most comprehensive day. Because your back is a lot of muscles, you know. There's a lot you can do for back, just like there's a lot you can do for legs. Like chest, chest and shoulders, you gotta pair those together because chest I mean there's not enough you can do for chest you might as well hit shoulders too you know that's your push day but back I mean back is such a huge muscle you could do a whole day of just back I just throw in the rear delts my rear delts are actually pretty strong as well I don't need to work rear delts very hard which is kind of the opposite of most people so like um, I find that my body is kind of the opposite of most people like a lot of people have to work on upper chest they have to do incline my upper chest is more developed than my lower chest so I do all flat and then with shoulders, most people's front delts are big because they get it in all the pushing movements, but their rear delts are lacking. My front delts are lacking, and my rear delts are pretty huge. They definitely poke out past my triceps. Now, my triceps are a weak point, so either my rear delts are really strong or it's just that my triceps are, are that weak and small, you know? And it's not even that I'm a pretty big guy, to be honest, you know? I mean, I'm 212 pounds. I did lose another pound overnight, so the cut is going well. Um, but yeah, I'm a pretty big guy. I just don't have great insertions, and great insertions can make you look way bigger. So like my triceps insert like way up here, 
So all my muscles up here, but you have some guys that their triceps are like right here and it just looks like a big bubble and they could actually have smaller, you know, a smaller circumference on the arm, but look way bigger than me because they have better insertions. And that's why I don't do bodybuilding, right? We're not all built for it. I love to work out like a bodybuilder. I love to lift weights. I like the sport. It's just not in the cards for me, you know? So... I'm mostly inspired by Sulik, you know, Sam Sulik to do these videos. I mean, that's, he's my number one inspiration. Obviously, I'm doing the exact same format as him. I'm also doing his split. Um, but I, I'm not, definitely not on his level, right? So, one of the allures to watching his content is that he looks so impressive. I'm not that guy, okay? So, hopefully, you know, when y'all are watching this, y'all, y'all maybe like seeing a more average guy lift, you know? Maybe it's more relatable, perhaps. Who knows? But that's about all. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, trying to get a decent little car talk in. We're at the gym. No need to waste time. We just got to get in there and put in the work. Once again, I think the parking lot's even more empty than it was last night. So it should be a pretty easy filming. I did notice at the beginning of yesterday's video, I was talking really quiet because I was uncomfortable. Um, today, I'm just going to go in there and talk because... I guess I'm uncomfortable because it's kind of, I feel kind of weird talking to a camera. What I need to realize is that the camera is all of you. It's y'all, as we say. <laughs> so um, I'm really just talking to y'all, talking to friends. So that's how I'm going to treat it. It's 5.36. I'll probably be around the, probably get this thing started at like 5.45. It'll give us an hour and 15 minutes. And of course, we'll stay until they kick us out, right? Unless we're done. So that's it. I'll see you on the gym. All right. I think this angle is going to be good. Um, this is like my favorite lat pull down machine. This is typically what I start with. I don't know if you can see these handles. Now you can. But it has the, uh, the arms are separate. And there's freedom to do whatever you want. So, you know, if you want to do wide grip, pronated, if you want to do neutral grip, or if you want to do supinated. Now typically, this is just a warm-up set, but typically I do all my stuff supinated. I find that my, um, that's where I get the best contraction on my lats. If I do pronated, especially wide grip, I just feel like I'm working out my teres. And my teres are typically like really tight. And a lot of times I got to use like a, like a ball, baseball or something, racquetball to massage them out because they're just so tight. So for me, supinated grip, pull downs, I'll do neutrals too, but I never do pronated. And like I said, the supinated also it just feels way better on my lats. I don't know. Some people think you got to grip wide to build the width. My back is extremely wide, and I always do this. Even with pull-ups, I do chin-ups. I don't do wide grip pull-ups. Now with warm-up sets, don't rest long between warm-up sets. You're just wasting time. I had it on about a third of what I'm going to do for a working set. So I didn't take it anywhere toward close to failure. So there's no point in me waiting three minutes to recover from my warm-up set. I waited about 20 seconds on this one. And now I'm doing just a little bit heavier. And I won't do many reps with these because I don't want to waste my energy with this light weight. I want to use my energy on the working sets. So. Just a few reps to fill it out and go right into the next set. Go a little heavier and fill that out. Make sure, um, make sure I'm at the right weight whenever I start my working sets. Yeah, still pretty light. Whoop. Almost slipped off right there. All right, now, I think that's going to be a good working set, a good eight reps. I might get 10 
who knows? But that's gonna be pretty close to where I'm at. Definitely not gonna do a feeler set with this one because this is typically what I do. Um, a lot of times I'm not even looking at how much weight I'm doing. So it's hard for me to replicate the next time. But on this particular machine, I've used it so much. I know that this is my working set. Maybe one more, maybe one more up, but it depends on the day. It depends how strong I am that day. Cause we're not always the same every day. You know, we have our good days and our bad days. So it depends. Now, while we're waiting to do this working set, let's adjust, address, <laughs> adjust, address the gym drip. I don't really have any. I essentially have a gym uniform. So I own maybe six pairs of black hoodies from different brands, you know. Um, and I own four black hoodies like this. And then the tank I have underneath, or well, a stringer, I guess, is the Dream Chaser stringer from J Lane. It's just the best fitting stringer I have. So it's always the stringer I wear so I can assess the pump because I think it fits the best. But I'm always gonna wear sweatpants and a hoodie while I'm working out. So I like to stay covered up until the end. It's just my new thing, okay? And then the backwards hat, you could call it drip, but this is, this is we make these hats, my company. So it's an all field hat. I think the logo is on the side. It's a nice little like digital camo print. But now that I cut my hair short, I always wear a hat. All right. It is time for a working set. I don't know why I'm standing up. I guess to grab these. I don't know. All right. Let's see if it's a good day or a bad day. It's a good day. I can do more than that. We went up a we went up a plate, and I forgot to use these. So these are tremendous. Um, I was really resistant to using these for a long time, and my forearms are huge. And everyone said use them. You know your grip strength limits your back strength. Like your grip will give out before your back. And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. I'd rather be, have strong grip, but it's true. One, my forearms are overdeveloped, so I don't need to get any more work. And two, I'm a lot stronger using these. So way better for back development. I forgot that I had them on me. Cause like I said, with this new filming, I have too many things in my mind and it's harder for me to, concentrate on what I'm doing so we're just gonna wrap these around here all right and then we can go ahead I don't even have to use my thumb when I'm using these because these are doing the grip for me ah. I don't even know if I'm that much stronger, but I feel it so much more because I'm not focusing on my grip. I'm focusing on just the lats. And I felt that a lot in my lats. So if you don't have a pair of these, even though this is really basic, I got these on Amazon, patriotic and shit, get you a pair of these. All right, time for working set number two. Um, the last one was pretty good, you know. I'm kind of opposite 
uh, from Sam in the way that and I'm going to draw a lot of comparisons to him because right now he's like the only YouTuber I watch and he's like my main inspiration for shooting this content but he does all those little like partial reps I mean when he gets the lat pull down so he'll be like uh, 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 for like 10, 10 more reps you know at that point I don't feel anything so for him he feels like if he doesn't do that he's like leaving gains on the table for me I feel like once I can't do like half a rep, I feel like I'm not doing anything extra except wearing myself out. So I do a couple of little partials, but I don't do as many partials as he does. I, I feel like for me, that's a waste of time. And now he's a lot bigger. He's a lot bigger than me. Every time I hear a loud noise, I want to stop talking because I assume y'all hear it as loud as I do, but it might not be that loud for y'all because y'all are on the mic. But yeah, he is a lot bigger than me. But everything, everyone has something different that works for them. That's, that's one thing that's really interesting about all this. It's like, there's so many different sources of information. Everyone's telling you something different. And honestly, everyone responds to different things. So. Before we get into the set, I will say one thing that doesn't work for me is uh, pre-workout, like fast digesting carbs. Like even now that I'm cutting and I'm not like well fed, it's still a waste of time for me to eat carbohydrates before the workout. It does nothing for my energy levels. It does nothing for my pump or my glycogen. I do way better if I haven't eaten before a workout. Like I need to eat about three hours before a workout and then I have the best workout. But if I eat right before a workout, I just consider it a waste of calories because I've, I've never felt a benefit from that. Whether I'm dieting, bulking, any pre-workout calories is just, is just a waste for me. And I'm done. Once I get to that point, I just, I'm not feeling it anymore. When I can't contract the muscle, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it just doesn't feel like it's doing anything for me, so I stop. All right, one more working set. All right, I'd initially planned to do four working sets. I'm only doing three. So this last working set is gonna be a drop set. And because it's a drop set, I'm not gonna use these because obviously I would have to set them back up every time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my grip on this one. And um, I kind of contemplated before I started this content if I was gonna show every set or not because obviously it makes for a very long video. My last video was over an hour long. But I am gonna show every set because every time I show a set, I get to talk to y'all. And it makes for, to me, it makes for a more, more fun video. So we're gonna do a drop set. I'm probably gonna do like five reps at each weight. And we'll do like, we'll go down like three or four times. One more. 
I dropped too early. So this is a little light. Or not dropped too early, but I dropped too much. That's where it's at. The drop set. The drop set. I really, I'm feeling the pump already. All right, let's do some rows. All right, so our first row movement. This is my favorite, probably my favorite back exercise of all back exercises. Is a cable row and um, my favorite handle to use is the science based lifters least favorite handle it's the D handle and I've just always loved this one I love the way it feels you know if they suggest doing one with a little bit wider grip where you can pull your your hands almost on the side of your rib cage where you get more of a contraction to me those don't feel as good so I just keep going with what feels right for me and I think that's really important for anyone watching this video is that, you know, have an open mind to listen to everyone and try new things, but at the end of the day, do what feels best for you. Because like I said, something different, you know, works for everyone. So this is what feels best for me, this is what I do. There's a light little warm up set. We'll probably double the weight that we're doing now. I do, uh, like I said, I just warm up on the first couple exercises. I got my lat warm up in. This will be my mid upper back warm up. And after that, we can just do working sets on the rest of the exercises. Is the angle good? Yeah. And this one, on the warm up sets, I just, I think they say mind muscle connection doesn't even matter now. And that's the new, the new theory, but that's kind of what I focus on on the warm-up set. Just feeling the contraction, getting some blood into the muscle, and that's it. No need to go too extravagant on there. Now, so I guess I warm up with about 50% of my working weight, and then after that, I just kind of do like little two. I just kind of do little two to three rep sets to get a feel of what I want my working weight to be, and then I take like a good three minute break before I do my first working set. So at this point, oh, what happened? I accidentally hit a button on my watch. At this point, I've only waited about. 20 seconds since that last set. Like I said, it wasn't taxing at all. It was just to get a feel for the movement. No point in taking a three minute rest. And now I'm going on to the two to three rep sets just to get a good feel for the weight I want for my working set. Definitely more than that. And we're encountering the same issue on this machine as we did with the standing calf where just now the plates were stuck together. So my first rep was actually a little bit more weight than I thought. They always fall off. It's just that initial, the initial pull. All right, so now I've waited a good three minutes before I'm gonna do my working set. And uh, I think I did a little bit more last time, but for whatever reason, today I felt strong on the pull downs. I don't feel quite as strong on the rows. So, I'm not sure why that is, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ego lift too much, you know. I, wanna, I want this workout to be effective. I want it to be intense, but I want it to be effective. So, we're going with this weight here. 
If they get more than eight reps, they get more. If not, then I'm right on point. Let's see what we got right here. Seeing now some cheetah reps. Yeah, that was a good weight. <laughs> that was heavy. Whew. Keep hitting this fucking watch. I'm closing all my rings though. That's good. All right. All right, so this is and always will be my favorite back exercise, but I'm only doing two sets on this one today. I always work out by feel, so we're going to get a little bit more variety. We'll do a different rowing movement after this. All right. plenty here. We'll move on to a lat pull down. All right, so we're doing some lat pull downs. I told y'all I never do pronated, never do wide grip. I want to do neutral grip since I've already done supinated. And I like this grip because I can really use these. So as I stated before, I already warmed up the lats. We're just doing like little two to three rep sets to figure out what the working weight's gonna be. And um, <coughs> I don't know what that was, I just choked on air. But um, as soon as we figure out the working weight, we'll get right into it. I'm gonna try to do three working sets here. I'm kind of, I'm kind of bored. I'm bored with monotony today. So I plan to do four working sets per movement, but I find, I find myself wanting to move on. So let's see. Yep, doing more than that for sure. Just gonna go ahead and jump. Make a big, a big jump. And hopefully I won't have to, hopefully this will be a working set. Can't waste too much time. We only got 25 minutes in here. I really need to start showing up earlier. But I am trying to show up later so that the gym is how it is right now, which is empty. Makes it much easier to, to film. All right. Yes, correctly. That was definitely a working set. Could have maybe done one less, but it was intensive. I brought the intensity, so that's all that matters. All right, we're going into our second working set here. I plan, I plan to do three, but I do still have to do another rowing movement and rear delts. So I might only do two working sets here. To be honest, my 
my upper mid back needs more work than my lats. My lats are very wide. Um, so I prefer to do rows just because that's what I need, you know. Um, not that I'm a bodybuilder, but I train like a bodybuilder. And part of bodybuilding is assessing your weak points and building the body to spec, right? So you got to focus on the stuff you lack. And for me, mid upper back is less developed than the lats. All right. Let's go. That's it. You know what? We're going to call it on this one. And we're going to find a chest supported row. That's the mood I'm in. Chest supported rows. All right, so now we're on the chest supported row. Um, sometimes my chest does come up off a little bit on the pad, kind of doing a little bit of cheaters. We got the equivalent of three plates on here right now. This is just what was already loaded on the machine. So, being that I know I'm good and warmed up, I'm gonna see if I can do this. Like I said, my mid upper back is, is a little further behind. It's never been very strong. I have a pretty large back. It's just genetics. The, the strength isn't really there. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can do this. Because that would save me time of figuring out how much I can do if it just happens to be right. But uh, it might not be right. <laughs> It very well could be too heavy. I almost forgot to use these. But yeah, so I haven't stuck to what I said I would do, which is four working sets on each movement. Um, and I don't know why, I'm just kind of like, I'm a little ADD today with the movements. I'm getting bored with them quickly. Now on the D handle cable row, I wasn't necessarily bored with it. I just felt like the intensity I brought to the two sets I did got me where I wanted to be. Like I really am feeling it from just those two sets. So I was like, all right, let me, let me switch to something lat, lat focused. Unless I would do a drop set or something, but I just did a drop set on that first lat movement. So I wasn't, I wasn't ready to do another one. Let's see, I'm probably gonna put this in. I must have had a giant on this machine before me because the pad was set pretty far away. I'm 5'10", you know? I'm a... <laughs> I think Ronnie Coleman's here. <laughs> yeah, buddy, lightweight. That's what I keep hearing. All right, we can get a good drip on this thing. I think my arms are still a little far away to get a good grasp on this. But yeah, I'm 5'10". I'm 5'10", I'm a normal sized guy. Whoever was on this machine must have been pretty large. Or had some freakishly long arms. All right, let's see where we're at with this. I probably could have, it's not three plates on there, it's uh, 245s or 25 and two tens. So it's the equivalent of three plates. I probably could take a 10 off of either side. But the first eight reps I got were pretty clean. The ninth was a cheater. And eight reps for me is good. So I'm gonna just keep it here. And uh, I'll probably do three, three working sets on this one because I just started with my working weight, so it'll go by quick. Um, and I need it, I need the rows, okay? But yeah, I might do, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take a 10 off of each side. I'm just doing a little more controlled for the second set. And then I might take another 10 off for the third set. You just kind of work into my fatigue. So rather than do the same weight and get less reps, 
I'll probably get similar reps each set just by decreasing the weight and really focus on that contraction. All right, so another noob mistake, the same one I made yesterday. I'm using a different memory card because I forgot my first memory card at home. And yesterday, the memory card had like 500 things on it and it ended up getting full. Just now, this memory card got full and it has 1,600 files on it. <laughs> so after I film this video and upload it, I need to clear both memory cards so this doesn't happen to me again. Because if we play by the rules, and leave when the gym closes, we only have about five minutes. And I gotta do two more working sets of this, rear delts, and I would like to get a pump check. And I definitely don't have time to do all that. So it looks like I'm gonna be that asshole again today. And we just gotta start getting to the gym sooner. We're gonna take 10 more pounds off each side. Do another working set. Yeah, five minutes left. Hopefully we have time to do some rare delts and then kind of assess the pump. All right, so I actually left the weight the same. We're not gonna take the tens off this time. And we didn't really get an adequate rest because I'm trying to rush this so I can get some rare delts in. Like I said before we walked in here, my rear delts are my rear delts are usually pretty popping, so it's kind of like my calves. I don't need to work on them much. I'll probably just do like a couple sets of like 15 to 20 reps just to get some blood in them, just to get a little pump going. Because with a with a set of 15 to 20, I don't really have to rest that long because it's not very intense. I'm gonna get this over with though. Except for that, let's do some rear delts. Let's see what time, how much time we got. Two minutes. All right, we're kind of rushing this portion of it. Like I said, I'm just going light, getting some blood flow in pain. Now, you never want to sit on this seat. You want to lean forward the proper angle. This is where I get a little science, even though I'm not science-based. The proper angle is kind of downward. So if you sit, you're going straight across. To me, I get a lot more trap activation. So this, I saw someone do this on TikTok and it really works. <sighs> I guess it's just a just came off of a, a row movement. But I was pretty weak at this. Typically I do like 170 or 190. So I put it on, I think it's on 130, thinking I would get like 20 reps, but I only got, I think that was like just barely 15. I think it was like 14 and a half. So whatever, we're kind of rushing it. That's no one's fault but my own because I got here late. So we're just going to have to start getting here earlier. No, I'm not saying that I didn't, you know, put in some good work here. I feel good with what I've done. I just would like to do a little bit more. You know, yesterday with legs, I was kind of beating myself up. I felt like I didn't do enough. And then an hour after the workout, I could hardly stand up. So maybe I'm not perceiving how much work I'm putting in. But um, I definitely would have liked to have got a little more work in today, but it is what it is. We'll do one more set of this and then we'll assess the pump. 
All right, so what I've done is I've dropped the weight even more. We only took about a 30 second rest because it is 7.03, so the gym closed three minutes ago. They haven't come do their roundup yet to get us out of here. I'm just gonna go straight into this set so we can get this over with. We're just gonna focus on the contraction of those rear delts. Try to get some blood in them. That's good. That's good. Let's go check out the pump and then get the hell out of here. Alright, I'm not sure what this angle is going to look like or the lighting. But, you know, do a little lat spread. You see the rear delts popping. I guess y'all can see that. They did just kick me out officially. I don't know if this is showing up or not. We're always in a rush because I have poor planning. But that's it. That's the pump check. All right, to the car. All right, so do we look kind of, I don't know how to do the poses. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the pump check looked like. Honestly, I don't even really have to mention this because it might not be noticeable, but it might be really noticeable, so I'm going to mention it. I have uh, one of the reasons I, I never planned on competing is because, let me end this workout. Oh, let me buckle up for the sake of the law and my safety, even though I have a three minute drive home. And we have to circle around the block so we get an adequate car talk. Um, I have a structural scoliosis, so I have a lot of asymmetries. It's a bone structure thing. It's not a, fun a functional scoliosis. You have a muscular imbalance that's pulling your spine out of place and you can fix that. Mine is structural, so I grew crooked. And because of that, um, my rib cage is kind of offset. And you know, my, my one side of my back is a little more developed than the other. I think it's also why my right leg is bigger than my left leg. I probably put a little bit more weight towards there. I probably have a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Um, I mean, there's not much I can do about it, you know? And at one point I almost, when I figured that out, cause I was like, something's off here. When I figured that out, I almost stopped working out entirely because the kind of working out I like doing is like bodybuilding style training. And I was like, all right, you don't have a future in bodybuilding. So what's the point? some mosquito in here you little bastard um but you know I, I just couldn't stay away from the gym so i was like you know what screw it you won't ever compete but if you enjoy doing this continue to do it so i do this for the sake of doing it for fun you know but there's no real goals attached to it i just like to work out but if that comes up, you know, if in, if in the, uh, the flex off or whatever we're doing, the pump check, you see that it's a little asymmetrical, that's the reason. I have a structural scoliosis. So, you know, a lot of times I don't show my physique online because of that. And maybe I should. I actually saw a guy on Instagram that had a really bad scoliosis, like much worse than mine. And he's a competitive bodybuilder. And he was like, you know, he's actually, I think he's enhanced as well because he was, had a lot of muscle. But I mean, it was like, his lat spread looked super crooked. Like one side of his back was really overdeveloped. And for someone like me, I have a mild scoliosis. I'm not putting myself out there. So I was like kind of shocked that he was putting himself out there and also trying to become a pro. Because in my opinion, even though he was really well developed and had a great physique, it was so lopsided. I'm like... I wouldn't have the guts to put myself out there. But sometimes I'm thinking like, maybe I should and kind of be an advocate for people with scoliosis because I'm obviously not the only one, you know, and it might be inspirational to people with scoliosis, but 
I don't know. I guess I, I do have some kind of fear of judgment, you know, and I'm not really ever pleased with the way I look. I mean, we all have body dysmorphia to some degree. So, um, I guess I just don't put myself out there that much, but who knows as, as time progresses, maybe I'll build up the courage, but I'm 34, you know, and I haven't built up the courage yet. So that remains to be seen either way, you know, whether I ever really take my shirt off and, and show y'all what I'm working with, or if I just continue to do uh, pump checks with the tank on, you're still going to be getting content. You're still going to be getting my peace of mind and um, my training style and some form of entertainment, regardless of if I really, you know, get down to a speedo for a pose down. We're going to take a, a few laps around the block because the house is way too close and this car talk will be way too short. So tonight's workout, like I said, I really work out by feel. I told y'all what my plan was going in there. But once I start working out, it's always subject to change. You know, if you're doing a movement and you're not feeling it or, or you do two working sets and you feel like you got enough out of it, you know, feel free to, to move on or, or stop doing it. You know, I guess it's the same thing, moving on and stopping doing it. Oh, look a little, is that a, oh, it's a cat. I thought it was a possum. Um, but yeah, don't just keep, the first person I ever saw say that was Joe Linder. And believe it or not, I'd worked out for a long time and I'd never really thought about it. But he got on a machine and he did a couple reps and he, the seat height wasn't right. So he lowered it a little bit and he did a couple reps and it wasn't right again. And he lowered it a little bit more and he did some reps and he said, okay, that feels good. And he said, basically like people will get on a machine and it won't feel right. But they'll just do three working sets anyway, you know, rather than like taking, rather than stopping and taking the time to adjust it until it feels right. He said, they'll just kind of like mindlessly go through the motions and not get the most out of it. And I, I think I was guilty of that for sure. So now I really focus a lot on the feel, on how I'm feeling during the workout. If I do a movement and it doesn't feel good at all, I won't do it again, you know, or if I, you know, do a couple sets like I did on those cable rows and I feel like I got the most I could out of it and I want to move on, I'm going to move on, you know. I said I'd do four working sets per exercise. Um, part of that was in an attempt to like kind of save time because if you don't have to move from one exercise to the other, you know, set up the camera again, get the angle, you know, it obviously saves a lot of time. But once I was in there, two or three working sets, I was maxed out. I wanted to move on. And I've always kind of, I kind of find, even though I love to train, and this is a dead end, yeah it is. Even though I love to train, sometimes the monotony of training is just like really boring to me. So like, you know, do a set, wait three minutes, do another set, wait three minutes. I used to do training, I used to do like circuit training. Uh, because working out had gotten really stale for me. So I had a home gym like I have now at my old house and I would just do a total circuit. And it was almost like CrossFit style training mixed with bodybuilding. Cause like I had a tire, I would hit with a sledgehammer. Then I'd go jump on some plyo boxes. Then I would go into a set of curls. Then I might go into a set of squats and I would do like a whole circuit of like 10 exercises. And then I would rest and then I would repeat. And um, I felt really athletic. It was a really well-rounded um, workout routine, definitely enough to keep anyone in shape, but it definitely wasn't a bodybuilding routine where you're gonna see, gotcha, bitch, where you're gonna see some real hypertrophy, right? So I went back to the traditional kind of bodybuilding training, but um, it's definitely, it definitely is boring for me sometimes. So uh, tonight was one of those nights where I just, a couple working sets, and I wanted to move on. And of course I got there late, so I was pressed for time. They did kick me out once again, but it wasn't as harsh as last night, but I also didn't stay as late. But this time it was a guy that I know that works there, because my girlfriend works at the gym. So I know a couple people there, um, but this guy knew me. So I had actually finished my last set of rear delts and he was walking by and he said, all right, Will, last set, man. And I was like, yeah, no problem. And instead of, you know, so I guess he was giving me a little bit of a pardon to stay for like one more set. But instead of doing another set, I just went ahead 
and did a little uh, pump check for y'all. With the back pump check, I can't really see it, so hopefully it looks cool. But uh, yeah, I just took that time to do a little pump check because I feel like what's the video if we don't assess the pump, you know? That's my favorite part of working out. Like if um, recently I was I wasn't getting much of a pump, and the detail you'll know the details of that if you keep up with my Instagram. But I wasn't getting much much of a pump when I was working out, and um, it almost made working out pointless <laughs> because the the best feeling in the world is getting the pump. You know, it just feels great to be engorged with freaking blood and just be like way bigger than you actually are. And um, I saw Sulik saying that that's probably the reason for body dysmorphia because people see themselves with the pump and they think that's their normal look and then they shrink back down and they feel small. And I agree with that 100%. Um, I'll let this car go. But I agree with that 100%. You know, you're always chasing the pump. And it doesn't matter, like, say you get pumped, you know, and you're 15% bigger. And that's the look you want. Well, say you grow, you work out long enough to where you grow when you actually are that size, not pumped. Well, you're still going to be bigger when you get a pump at that time. So you'll still be, al you're always going to be chasing that pump. No matter how much bigger you get, when you work out, you're even bigger. So if you get used to that look of you being pumped, you know, you're going to be forever chasing that look. And I think that's the, the plight of most people that do bodybuilding. It's like we're always chasing that pump. But, you know, today's workout, it was either high volume or low volume. I'm actually passing in front of my house right now, but I'm going to pass it up so we can talk a little bit longer. Um, yeah, today's workout, it was either high volume or low volume, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, I did roughly five sets of lats instead of eight and five sets of rowing type movements. Um... So if you look at it like that, five and five is not much. But if you look at it as one whole back, I did 10 working sets of back total. So 10 working sets is sufficient. But I think you really got to break it up into lats and upper mid back. So it's really like five and five. So I think I should have got more volume there. And then I only did two sets on the rear delts, but I was able to see the rear delt pump. So hopefully that shows up on camera. The rear delts, my rear delts are huge for whatever reason. Maybe in the, you know, I say my mid upper back is kind of weak. Maybe my rear delts are taking over a lot of the work because you're obviously using rear delts during those movements as well. So maybe that's why my rear delts are so big. But for that being most people's lagging muscle, and the, the mainstream advice being to, you know, hit rear delts first because most people are lacking rear delts. Mine are quite sufficiently developed. And it does look really cool. It does look really cool. I just need to figure, figure out how to grow these uh, front delts. I did some front raises with the cable last time I worked out, and that, that felt really good. See, I think on any kind of pressing movement my chest really takes over because my chest is more powerful than my front delts um, and I think that's why my front delts are lacking because my chest is taking over so those front cable raises cables are just amazing you know way better than dumbbell movements because you keep that constant tension but that was the most I felt my front delts in a while so I'll probably start incorporating that into the routine because other than like overhead presses with dumbbells, I really, I don't do anything for front delts. So that's my bad, you know. I know that they're kind of behind and I don't really emphasize them when I train. Because I don't really, I don't really love working out shoulders. I don't know what it is. Big delts are like one of the most impressive things aesthetically. Um, but it's not my favorite thing to train. I really like training chest. I really love training arms and back as well. Back is like one of my favorite pumps, just the way it feels like you just feel so, I don't know. It's like your arms are sitting on your latch. You feel so good, but shoulders, eh. shoulders are just, it's like, and when I get a good pump in my shoulders, it burns so much. I can't even lift my arms and that's not even pleasant either. 
I, but I do like the way it looks when I have a shoulder pump. So that's it. But I'm pretty much rambling. I don't have much to say. I'm uh, just getting home now. Didn't feel like driving around any longer. It's 7.30. We're going to go grocery shopping. We got a bunch of ground meat that uh, today's like the last day. Let's see. Today's like the last day to use it. So we're going to cook it all. I think we're going to make some of it into a chili. My girlfriend's going to do a stuffed um, bell pepper, ground meat and cheese, some provolone. I might do half into a chili and half into like a meat sauce for a spaghetti. But that's not what I'm going to eat tonight. Tonight I'm going to eat a New York strip. I'm probably going to eat a steak every single day. I'm really loving that steak. But I'll eat a New York strip. And um, I'm going to have enough calories to eat an entire pint of ice cream. So I might do that as well. We've been losing like a pound a day. I'm getting... um uh, how many steps I have. I was getting over 20,000 steps a day. One day I got 25,000. Because I just walk while I work and I walk while I watch TV on a treadmill. And it's like I'm not even doing cardio. It's so automatic. Yeah, I have, I have uh, 13,000 steps. And that's what I got yesterday, too. So I was getting over 20. It was just way too much. Like, my calves were always sore. I was just I was feeling too tired to put enough training, to put enough energy into training. Um, so I lowered it down. I was also losing weight really, really fast. So I scaled back my steps to at least 10,000. So I basically halved my cardio. And um, what I do is I get my 10,000 through walking uh, on the treadmill and then anything else is extra. So all the steps I took in the gym got me to 13,000. I was at 10,000 when I got to the gym. I got an extra 3,000 once I was there just walking around from machine to machine. And then I'll get more walking around the grocery store and walking around the house, you know. So we might get to like 15 today without without even really trying. But yeah, I decreased my, my uh, steps by about half. And then I increased my calories. I was trying for 2,800 calories. I increased it to 3,200, 3,300 because I was literally losing a pound a day. And I'm still losing almost a pound a day. So uh, my goal weight with a number is 200 pounds. I think I need to get leaner than that to actually look lean, like 195, 190. But right now in my head, it's just 200 pounds. And I'm sticking to the minimum 10K steps, weight training every day, and 32 to 3300 calories until I get to 200. And then if I'm still losing weight rapidly, I'll tweak those variables, up the calories, decrease the activity. But until I get to 200, those variables are staying the same uh, because it's working for me. So that's it for the video. <laughs> two videos, two days, two videos. So this is exciting. This is going to be easy to make daily content. I'm really excited about this. I hope y'all like this content because this is really enjoyable for me to make. And hopefully as we go on, We'll branch off into like maybe some cooking videos, maybe some grocery shopping videos, you know. But right now, keeping it simple with the car talks and the gym. And um, that's it. I'll see you on the next video.